Welkom terug, ons gesels nou met Dr. Imtias Suleiman, hoofd van die noodlenigingsorganisatie Gift of the Givers, oor hulle werk in die droogte en hongergeteisterde Somalia. Dr. Welcome, it's nice speaking to you. Good evening, thank you very much. I've asked the question in the first part of this program, but how did this particular operation differ from others that you've done in other parts of the world, in Haiti, in Pakistan, in Iran and so forth? Every operation is different, but this has been the biggest one, the most tragic, the greatest loss of life, the greatest support from South Africa, and our biggest project in our 19-year history. It's very challenging in terms of going to a country that has no proper functioning government, that is under war, that has only five or six kilometers of the city under its control, that has AU forces in sight, that has people who you don't know who they are, who the enemy is, in inverted commas. They could be very ordinary people who target foreigners specifically, especially media, and people from different countries. Suicide bombers take you out. You need your own security, your own compound. You need to get food in. Besides the famine and the volume of people, the sheer numbers of people requiring attention, the areas to get to, the shortage of water, no functioning uh, streets, no proper roads. There's potholes between roads. I mean, it's so badly destroyed. And besides that, you have a 21-year history of war. Those people require surgical intervention. And besides that, you have normal people for the last 21 years who have very normal diseases who require attention also. So you have to factor all these things in. And the fact that Mogadishu and Somalia has such negative publicity over the last few years that nobody wants to go in. How do you land? What do you do? How do you get in? The sea is closed because but of answer some of those questions. How do you get in? For instance, if there's no functional government, how do you arrange to get in? Well, I went in on the 20th of July. My luck is I met the president, the prime minister, and those people who were in control at that time. And just to explain how things change, 48 hours later, the entire government was replaced. You know, the whole cabinet was changed. Mm. But it gave me enough time to see the camps on the ground, to meet South Africans who were working in the airport in Mogadishu, who were involved in the clearance of, of cargo, and in, in also inside the Amazon forces. There were South Africans who were involved in the AU forces. And they said, look, you can land here. Basically, the civil servants, wherever they are, are running the country. So he said, let's take a chance and we flew the first plane in, and it went in very smoothly. We arranged through, I had a Somali on the ground who lives in South Africa, who's working with me for the last six years, because we were involved in Puntland in the tsunami, mm. you know, in 2004. Yeah. So I know him from then. And the, the key factor here is, how do you negotiate your attitude towards people, building relationships, strengthening the ties with all people, knowing the different clans, knowing the mentality, the mindset, and you need somebody who understands all that. This man, Dr. Hashi, understood all that. And you think that link, we opened up all the doors to get him. Yeah, you, you told us earlier about the bad publicity of Somalia. What, what kind of a people are they? Because we, we hear about the, the pirates at sea and the Al-Shabaab and how terrible it is and so on. But they as a people, not all of them can be like that. No. The, 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 the first relationship with Somalis was in Hafun. And then, of course, in South Africa. There's a huge Somali community in South Africa. It's not consistent to see the Somali community and them walking with guns. It just doesn't match. Because they are such a docile people, so calm, so hospitable, so loving, they won't harm a fly. So it doesn't make sense to see them with guns. You know, yes, there are clans, there are people because now for survival of the fittest, but deep down, they're wonderful people. The main, I'm gonna explain to you how the lady in the front of the queue went to the back of the queue. Yeah. The other phenomenon about Somalis is, they, if there's a program like this, they will bring all the kids first. Even the, the doctors witnessed it in the hospital that we set up. The first few days, only the children were brought. Mm -hmm. Then the pregnant women came. Then the normal women, and last the men. So they are very giving, very patient, and they're very you know, resilient people who won't harm a fly. They want to invite you into their homes. They want to share with you what they don't have. So they are all warm, wonderful people. You fall in love with them, every member of the team. And I took in 97, 94 people. All of them fell in love with the Somalis. And then you spoke about relationships earlier, but obviously you must also work with the, with the African Union, you must work with the UN and with other organizations. Tell us a little bit about that, the interaction that you, was ha that you had with those organizations. Well, when we went in, you know, the, the AU forces, we met the, the Ugandan component, a Colonel Lochek, low, low, sorry, low catch. He was a very humble guy, we met him. Then from the civilian sector, there was a lady called Jackie Amamo. We met her. We immediately bonded because Colonel Low catch has trained in South Africa. He was, you know, it was common ground for him. So already the link was made. And I think the biggest asset we had is that we were from South Africa. 
South Africa is a big name in Africa. It's a big name in the world. And we're African. The fact that we came from Africa as an African organization, everybody embraced us. The mayor and the governor received us at the airport. And just today, just today, before I came onto the program, I got a call from my man on the ground to say the president of the country, with six ministers from cabinet, visited the hospital that we took over and said, send a special message to South Africa that we thank our African brothers for coming to our aid. And that has, you know, that link with the mayor. And the mayor and the governor brought them to the hospital. Because when we got there the first day, the governor was cheering and the mayor was cheering. And all the commissioners of the 16 districts met us and they said, please come to my district. Please come to my district. My need is bigger than their need. But wherever you go, you are most welcome. So actually, the foot soldiers, the commissioners, the mayor and the governor opened the government for us. And then uh, you mentioned earlier that you also have support from the South African government here, but also generally about the, the public here, because you need a lot of money for this kind of thing, isn't it? Uh, give us a picture of that kind of logistical side of it, dealing with the South African government, the public and, and institutions here. The country has been absolutely phenomenal. A special thank you to all South Africans watching this program today. You guys made it happen. The government came to our side. I was in invited to parliament to speak to the International Relations Committee. And I said very clearly how we need to respond greatly. Government has given us 4 million rand already. We've been given two defense force planes. But besides that, the different structures of government, the civil servants, the hospitals, the police force on Friday, the police services in Pumalanga gave us a whole lot of aid. SARS has given us aid, you know, uh, in cash, which you don't normally do. Different departments, ministers, MPs, the, uh, the speaker of the uh, legislatures, all have got in. From Limpopo province, three horse and trailers of stuff came. The government took me over to the AU conference. So in every sector of government, <coughs> they with us. Tomorrow we're meeting the Treasury. They've asked us to brief them on how they can put bit bigger input into Somalia. So the government has been phenomenal. The media, your group, I mean, they've carried the picture home and people have responded to this picture. Corporates have come like never before to the party. I mean, corporates normally, to be blunt, like to take the register. We gave something. This time it wasn't taking the register. It was a really generally felt. Ordinary people said, I can give only one rent. That's all I have. And they gave the one rent. School kids, churches, mosques, temples, everybody got together and said, we want to do collecting cans, collecting toys. The country has been moving. 50 million people have been mobilized in South Africa. When Jerry Rollins came, you know, two, three or four weeks ago to South Africa, he said, I've never seen anything like this in the history of the African continent where an entire nation has mobilized for Africa. Tell us just lastly, if you reflect now of, of what you've done in Somalia and some of the other missions, what do you think about humanity and how we interact with each other? I think I can speak specifically for South Africa. South Africa, the Somali said, South Africans are an Ubuntu nation. They will not leave us alone. They said, we, have been, we are a forgotten people for 21 years, but if anybody comes to our aid, it will be South African. They said black, white, Indian colored, they are a compassionate people. They will respond to us. We are afraid they will come. And when we came, they said, you see, we told you they will come because we know they have compassionate hearts. They are a people that stand out for Africa and for the world. Doctor, thank you. And good luck. Thank we you wish very much. Well, this is Tatum de Groot and as a commentaar, liever schrijf gerust aan ons bij Robinson, bij Kijknitsen.